here is your latest African news. Africa-wide, five African presidents Uhuru, Bongo Buhari, Ramaphosa and Tshisekedi join global leaders in climate talks. President Uhuru Kenyatta is among 40 participants in an ongoing leaders summit on climate change alongside President Felix Tshisekedi of the DRC, President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa, Ali Bongo of Gabon and Nigeria's Muhammadu Buhari. The summit, a two-day virtual event, is aimed at underscoring the urgency of stronger climate action. Sudan, Egypt and Ethiopia Sudan, Egypt make moves over Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, but it ends in deadlock. The latest round of talks between Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance have ended with no progress made. Delegations from the three countries met in an attempt to break a deadlock in negotiations over Ethiopia's massive dam on the Nile River, a project that Addis Ababa says is key to its economic development and power generation. Somalia. Somalia. AU Somalia not ready for one man, one vote. The African Union has expressed reservations about the ability of Somalia to hold countrywide elections involving all citizens. A special envoy to be appointed by the African Union will have just a month to drive mediation between parties in Somalia, who have failed to agree on an electoral calendar to prepare for indirect polls. Kenya Kenya's satire is under threat, with looming government crackdown Kenyans have long challenged power by laughing. But the Kenyan government has started to crack down on humor. Humor and satire have become a favorite means to visit torments upon the kleptocrats and incompetence in power. But the Kenyan state is not laughing. Ghana. Ghana basks in Twitter's surprise choice as Africa HQ. Twitter delivered a surprise for Africa when it said it was establishing a regional headquarters in the West African nation of Ghana, triggering vigorous debates about the business environment for technology startups across the continent. Ivory Coast Video gaming culture booming in Ivory Coast. Across Africa, the video gaming industry is booming, especially in Ivory Coast. More people than ever before have access to gaming platforms, and African developers are designing their own games. Young Africans can now explore virtual universes that they can relate to. Nigeria. The Nigerian nightmare Kamaru Asman defends UFC title, a big night in the Ultimate Fighting Championship 261 for Nigerian Kamaru Usman. Dubbed the Nigerian nightmare, he scored a second round to knockout to finish American George Masvidal on Saturday. It secures, it secures his undisputed FC waterweight title. Africa wide. New malaria vaccine first to reach World Health Organization efficacy demand. The first malaria vaccine to meet a World Health Organization specified goal of more than 75% efficacy, a potentially significant step towards defeating the disease, has been formulated in Oxford. Malaria kills about 400,000 people a year, largely in sub-Saharan Africa, with most being children under the age of five. Chad. Chad Army appoints election runner-up as Prime Minister. Chad's military junta on Monday named former Prime Minister Albert Pahimi Padake, who was runner-up in the Sahel country's April 11 presidential election, as interim Prime Minister. He was the last Prime Minister under the late former President Idris Deby, whose recent death came as a huge shock to the country. Mozambique. Total halts its $20 billion gas project in northern Mozambique. The French energy firm Total announced that it has halted all operations on its $20 billion investment in a liquefied natural gas project in northern Mozambique as a result of the extremist rebel insurgency there. The declaration has cast doubt on future of the gas project, which had been expected to bring a large and sustained economic growth to Mozambique's economy. Africa-wide. Funders of African health research exclude African scientists. 
A group of African scientists are calling on the funders of Africa-focused health interventions to change their approach and make sure that African scientists are not excluded from scientific research and Africans from healthcare. The scientists have published a letter in Nature Medicine criticizing the fact that funding for health interventions on the continent sidelines local institutions and local scientists. Rwanda. Rwanda's youth seeks to heal genocide wounds. The country's younger generation is seeking to heal old divisions between the groups, but this comes with its own set of challenges. As the country looks ahead on the 30th anniversary of the genocide in 2024, the country's younger generation looks set to play a big part in the healing process, choosing love over hate. Nigeria. Women protest Niger Delta oil pollution. In Nigeria's oil-producing Niger Delta, women are breadwinners in many homes, doing traditional jobs like farming, fishing, while men often head to cities to work. After decades of oil pollution, women especially have suffered the consequences of serious pollution and the health problems associated with it. But they are now leading the movement to change that. The Democratic Republic of Congo. Road to Clean Energy runs through the Democratic Republic of Congo. Renewable energy sources are key to addressing the climate crisis. The DRC has 70% of the world's cobalt, used for batteries that enable clean electricity. Investment in infrastructure and attention to curbing child labor are urgently needed to exploit this resource for a great global good. Somalia. Somali president calls for election in a bid to calm tensions. Somalia's president, Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed, called early Wednesday for elections and a return to dialogue after the extension of his mandate by two years sparked the country's worst political violence in years. Kenya. Kenya is posed for the first female Chief Justice. Martha Karambu Kume is poised to become Kenya's first woman Chief Justice after a judicial panel announced her nomination for the role on Tuesday. The Judicial Service Commission submitted Kume's name to the president after it unanimously recommended the appointment. Mali. Climate change greatly threatening fish farming in central Mali. Ecological issues are threatening livelihoods in central Mali. In the inner Niger Delta, overfishing has depleted stocks. The Sahara Desert is also encroaching on the green floodplains, causing a deeply worrying situation for fisher folks. Africa-wide. How seriously is Germany taking its colonial history? Genocide, looted art, stolen skulls, calls for Germany to acknowledge its colonial past have grown even louder. Four years ago, the government in Germany promised to re-examine the issue, but no real progress has been made in this area. It took more than 100 years for the German government to officially acknowledge the country's colonial actions in Africa. And now the question remains, will they acknowledge their past and make reparations? Nigeria. Nigeria's president wants U.S. military base to move to Africa. Nigeria's president, Muhammadi Buhari, has called on the U.S. to move its AFRICOM military headquarters to the continent from Germany. He made the request during U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's online virtual visit to Africa, a substitute for an in-person visit that didn't happen because of the coronavirus restrictions. South Africa, the woman shaping the future of African space exploration. The fully black woman-owned satellite tech company Astrofica, based in Cape Town, specializes in assembling, manufacturing and testing satellite systems, which is a lucrative focus on the African space industry. According to Space in Africa, 41 satellites had been launched from the continent by August 2020, and that number is likely to triple by 2024. More than $4 billion has been invested in satellite development across Africa so far. Namibia. A lab in a remote Namibian city is saving the cheetah from extinction. 
remote city of Otiwarongo that in Namibia, scientists are working hard to restore the cheetah population through conservation science. The scientists achieve this by recovering eggs from some of their captive cheetahs and inseminating them with sperm in their lab. Africa-wide, latest COVID-19 statistics from African countries. As of April 28, confirmed cases of COVID-19 from 55 African countries reached 4,523,057. Reported deaths in Africa have been said to have reached and exceeded 120,793, while over 4,041,000 people have recovered and 10,600,000 vaccinations have been administered. Kenya. Kenya High Court blocks repatriation of refugees from Kenya's largest camps. The High Court has temporarily blocked the government from repatriating refugees and asylum seekers dwelling at Kakuma and Dadaab camps. Justice Anthony Mrima issued the order following a petition filed by rights advocacy group Kituo Cha Sharia challenging Interior Minister Fred Matiangi's announcement on the government's intention to shut the two refugee camps. Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC to return AstraZeneca vaccines to UNICEF. The Democratic Republic of Congo says it will return the United Nations Children's Fund's uh, a total of 1.3 million doses of the 1.7 million it received for redistribution to other African countries. The decision was made to ensure usage of the vaccines before the expiry date on June the 24th. Gabon. New data shows China is Gabon's leading trade partner for a decade. China is Gabon's biggest trading partner, according to data published by the International Trade Center, a body that compiles trade statistics around the world. Based on mirror data provided by partners on foreign trade, Gabon has achieved a cumulative trade surplus of $16.3 billion between 2009 and 2020. Malawi. Malawi's Supreme Court has ruled that the death penalty is unconstitutional. The court said the death penalty was against international human rights standards. This means that life sentences will be the highest punishment in Malawi. The Malawi Human Rights Commission described the ruling as progress. Senegal. Senegal is the only African country to criminalize slavery. To this date, Senegal is the only African country that has voted for a law that criminalizes slavery. Senegal's National Assembly passed a law declaring the Atlantic slave trade and the enslavement of African people a crime against humanity. The law passed by the Senegalese Senate on April 27, 2010, not only recognizes slavery as a crime, but it also requires that the history of slavery be taught in schools. It is estimated that 22 million people were taken from Africa and shipped to the rest of the world between the year 1500 and 1888. Nigeria. Nigeria's flatter wave makes it on Time's 2021 influential list. Time reports that the fintech company Flatterwave was chosen in the influential list for its efforts in recharging retailers after the pandemic slowed travel in Nigeria. Flatterwave, a Nigerian fintech firm, has been named a pioneer on Time's 2021 list of the 100 most influential companies in the world. In a list, which includes big wigs like Apple, your Twitter and Stripe, the firm makes history as the only African company to make it this year. Africa-wide. U.S. Africa policy. President Joe Biden seeks to turn a new leaf. After Trump's tumultuous four-year presidency, Joe Biden is returning U.S.-Africa relations to old shared values. With a focus on mutual respect, the new partnership will not be about competing with China. Sudan. Sudan reportedly suspends planned Russian naval base. Sudan has reportedly suspended plans for Russia to open a naval logistics base in a key Red Sea port. In news that has sparked immediate denials, from Moscow. 
Russia in December announced the signing of a 25-year deal to build the logistics hub for nuclear-powered warships and up to 300 military and civilian personnel in Port Sudan. It would have been Russia's first naval base in Africa and its second on foreign territory after Syria's Tartus. Eswatini. Eswatini's economy risks crashing. The Kingdom of Eswatini is carving a path to a private-led economy, an economy at risk of crashing if it does not embrace crucial economic reforms. For a while now, the Kingdom has been struggling to attract a large amounts of investment, but the COVID-19 pandemic seems to have presented the opportunity that it needs to restructure the local economy. That's why, late last year, Eswatini unveiled an economic recovery plan to get it out of the woods, thus expecting big things from its ambitious post-COVID-19 economic recovery plan. South Africa. Zulu Queen Manfombi Lamini dies a month after becoming regent. The Zulu royal family in South Africa has announced the death of its monarch, Queen Shiyiwe Manfombi Lamini Zulu, just a month after she became regent. Queen Manfombi, 65, became interim leader of the country's largest ethnic group last month after the death of her husband, King Goodwill Zulitini. The regent of the Zulu nation died unexpectedly on Thursday, the royal palace has announced. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's Langton Rusere makes history. Zimbabwe's Langton Rusere has become cricket's first black African to umpire a test match. The 35-year-old is one of the on-field umpires for the five-day game between Zimbabwe and Pakistan that began on Thursday at the Harare Sports Club. He got his first ever overseas appointment for a bilateral series after he was appointed to officiate in the three-match ODI series between New Zealand and India. Nigeria. Germany to return looted Benin bronzes to Nigeria. Precious artifacts that were looted during the colonial era will finally be returned to Nigeria, the German government has officially announced. The first returns are planned for 2022. In a joint declaration published on Thursday, German's Ministry of Culture, state ministers and museum directors committed to substantive returns of Benin bronzes artworks made of bronze, brass and ivory that were taken by the British Army in a raid on the Kingdom of Benin in present-day Nigeria in 1897. Ghana. Why Ghana doesn't get full value for its cocoa beans? The global chocolate industry is worth over $150 billion. West Africa supplies 70% of the cocoa beans, but most of the value in a chocolate bar is generated in Europe and in North America. West African economies receive less than $6 billion US dollars. The pattern is typical in economies that mostly rely on exporting raw materials. They have to choose almost between generating revenue from those commodity exports and then adding value to products locally. Thank you so, so much for watching this. Visit our YouTube channel Tuna Cheki to watch the full news report and our website at tunacheki.tv for all of your latest African news updates. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a patron. And remember, Africa is watching. And remember, you can also leave your suggestions of topics you'd like us to cover in the comments below.